Okay, so I'm going to keep working on the UF Physics 1 exam. And in the previous video, I did kind of the more, I guess you could say, conceptual type problems, the first six. The next three are going to be more workout type problems, and uh, they're, they're specifically kinematic questions, which I've done some videos on those before. I've done examples of them, but we'll do these for practice. So we'll start with question seven, which says a rock is thrown from a height 58.8 meters above the ground with an initial velocity 19.6 meters per second. How long would it take for the rock to hit the ground? So I'm just going to draw it out a little bit here. I like to draw pictures, so that's what I'm going to do here. So I'm going to call this height uh, H, or better yet, I'll call it uh, Y not the initial height. And this ball is being thrown straight up. So I'll actually move it over a little here. Straight up, it reaches some max and it comes down. Okay. And this is the ground right here. This level is the ground. Okay, so that's kind of our setup. <clears throat> and we want to know how long it'll take. We know the initial velocity. So I'll just make a note of what we know. We know that y naught is equal to... 58.8 meters. We know the initial velocity is 19.6 meters per second. We don't know the velocity with which it hits the ground, so I'll just leave that as unknown. We can say that Y final is equal to zero meters because it hits the ground, and we'll let that be our... Uh, I guess you could say our axis here, um, or this is Y and this is X. This is our origin right here. That's our origin. So eventually it hits the ground. That means your Y final is zero. We know that the acceleration is going to be just due to gravity. That's going to be negative 9.81 meters per second squared. So just for reference, we're going to let up be positive. And the time is what we're actually looking for. So because of that, I'll actually put a question mark there. And now what we need to do is use our kinematic equations to solve for what we need to know and one of the most common ones we'll use is y equals y naught plus v naught t plus one half a t squared this is one of our most popular kinematic equations um and we're using this you, you'll have a bunch you'll have maybe like four or five that you need to consider um but this is a very common one we end up using. Okay, so let's plug in what we know. Well, we know that this is gonna be zero, and we know that this is going to be G. So we have zero equals Y naught plus V naught T plus one half G T squared. Okay. So, how do we solve for this? I'm going to rewrite this a little bit. I'm just going to rewrite this from descending order, which you might be a little bit more familiar with. So our power of t is going down, and this is a quadratic. This is just a quadratic. And we know what all these coefficients are. This will be... So if we plug in, that'll be minus... I believe it's 4.9 t squared. If you take 9.81, divide it by 2. 
9.81 divided by 2. So I'm just plugging in. Plus our initial velocity, 19.6 T. Plus our height of 58.8. And this is really just a pre-calc problem at this point. This is just a quadratic equation. And we can find the time where this happens. And we do that by doing the quadratic equation. So negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac divided by 2a. Our a is negative 4.9. Our b is 19.6. And c is 58.8. So t is equal to negative 19.6 plus or minus the square root of 19.6 squared. So 384.16 minus 4 times a times c. So I'm just going to plug all that in. That's going to be a plus 1152.48. And then we divide it by 2 times A, which is just going to be 9.81. Okay. All right, so I'm going to plug these values in really quick. Um... Well, I'm going to go ahead and keep simplifying it, but 384.16 plus 1152.48. And then the square root of that. So T equals negative 19.6 plus or minus 39.2 over 9.81. Now, it doesn't really make sense for us to... Well, let's go ahead and plug these in. So we have 19.6, negative 19.6, plus 39.2 over 9.81. There we go. So for this one, we actually have to remember that that is a negative. So two times that will be negative 9.81. That was a sign error that I had. So two times a, that's two times negative 4.9. That's actually negative 9.81. So hopefully that makes sense. As for the plus or minus, <clears throat> if we do the plus, then we're going to have a positive number over a negative number. And that doesn't make sense. So we'll just subtract them. So, negative 19.6 minus 39.2 over negative 9.81. A negative divided by a negative will give you a positive, and you get about 6 seconds. Okay? So that's how long it takes for the ball to hit the ground. So again, we just write down what we knew. We drew a picture. We wrote down what we knew. We use our quadratic equation or our kinematics equation. Played with it a little bit. Plugged in variables. Solved the quadratic equation. Plugged it in and got our answer. Now for question eight, it's very similar. The only difference with eight is now the ball is being thrown straight down so what that means is your velocity is going to be negative so all that's happening here is basically a sign chain so this is now going to be negative this will be negative this will be positive that's still, when we square the negative, it's still going to be positive, so that's not going to change anything. This will be positive. Okay. And now if we do this, 
So essentially all you're doing is having a sign change, one sign change. And if you do that, you'll get uh, negative 19.96 minus 39.2. You still want a negative divided by negative 9.81. And that's equal to negative 1 point, basically negative 2.0 seconds. This makes sense. You'd expect if you threw it straight down, it would hit the ground faster than if you threw it up and then it came back down. So like I said, the only thing that changes there is the sign for our velocity. So that changes, which changes this, uh, which changes this, and that's it. Nothing too crazy there. This will turn into a positive, so on. So hopefully that makes sense. Okay. So I'm going to do one more problem, question 9, and then we'll do a little break. And it says, a car is moving along a straight line with a velocity v. A v. Applying the brakes causes constant negative acceleration, which stops it in 5 seconds with a distance of 50 meters. What is the magnitude of the acceleration? Oh, and I guess we should check to make sure our answers are actually on there. So we got 6 seconds. That should be a positive two seconds. I just didn't fix it on my calculator. So six seconds, two seconds. Okay. All right. So for nine, we have this another kinematics problem, and we have a car moving at some velocity, and then it hits the brakes. And it stops in five seconds within a distance of 50 meters. And we have to find the acceleration. So you have a couple of different equations that you can use here. The one that I'm going to use is... Uh, let me actually pull up my kinematic equations here. So we can say... V final equals V initial. I'm just going to call it V. V naught plus AT. Now it's negative acceleration, so I'm going to make that a negative. And V squared, that's your final velocity, is equal to V naught squared. It's supposed to be plus 2 AD, but because the acceleration is negative, I made that negative. And I'm going to use these two equations because we basically have two equations and two unknowns. Now the final velocity in both these are going to be zero because it comes to a rest. So we have, if I move that over, AT equals V naught. And over here, I have V naught squared equals 2AD. Okay? So if I were to square both sides here, I'll get A squared T squared equals V naught squared, which can now be plugged into here. A squared T squared equals 2AD. This A, oops, will drop with this A here. And we can find that the acceleration is 2 times the distance divided by times squared, where those are all given. So 2 times 50 over the time, which is 5 squared and I get 4 if you wanted to check your units you could so just as an example we'll do a unit check you don't have to do this all the time but sometimes it's worth doing so distance has units of meters right our distance has units of meters, and that has seconds, so squared, meters per second squared. Awesome. Um, perfect. So that was pretty straightforward, but it's worth checking. And that is option choice one again. Okay. So seven, eight, nine, those are basically how you do them. Uh, if you wanted to for nine, you could try to take a more systematic approach and do this little method here. This is a really good method um, if you don't know where to begin. 
with enough practice, you won't necessarily have to write down everything. You'll just kind of know what equations to work with, but it's still good to write those down if you're not sure. So hopefully that makes sense.